Okay, here I have taken the some of the um, inserts and turned them into little booklets. I'm going to trim that one out in just a minute. But all I did was take some regular computer paper, fold it in half, and I'm just going to stick it inside there. I'm just going to poke two holes. Hopefully I got that. Yeah. That are, you know, close. Close to being equal. And then I've got a needle here. It's a pretty large needle, actually. I don't know if that's enough string or not. I'm going to go in from the outside, and it's just got some crochet thread on it. Nothing fancy. And should, oh, just enough. And I'm really just going to tie a knot, an overhand knot. I just put a couple of sheets in here to fold up. Whoa to fold over and it's just really to do some journaling or write down the event um, or write down a special memory that you maybe don't want everybody to see as they're flipping through because you know not everybody opens up the pockets and stuff when they're looking at other people's stuff. Okay so then I wanted to show you how I trim these out. You can use your paper trimmer whichever paper trimmer you have. If you don't have a paper trimmer you can use a ruler and a craft knife and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna I'm not gonna use I'm gonna use this big monster heavy duty one. I'm gonna line it up to that edge, the metal edge of my ruler. And I'm just gonna make a couple passes. Uh um -oh, looks like I might be getting dull here. Okay, I'm gonna trim this side out, except I'm gonna go a little slower this time. Try not to put too much pressure. It's only four sheets of paper. <laughs> I think I'm getting dull. That's just what it boils down to. Okay, and then I'm gonna I did the to this one too, so I'm gonna trim this out. I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to even trim out the ones that have the rounded corners. And then I'm going to take a pair of scissors. These are Tim Holtz um, scissors. They cut through anything. So now you got a little booklet. I'm going to I'm going to ink the edges real quick. You know, I want it to too. I want it to um, put some tabs on these. So I'll grab those here in just a second. Okay, I want to add some uh, tabs to these. So I'm going to get my instruction manual back out. The tabs that come on the photo mats is what I'm looking for. All right, all right, let's see. I've already put a tab, I made this one, and I already put a, um, a tab on it. See, it's cute, right? I don't know if you noticed or not, but they are three different shapes, like a regular tab, and then there's a rounded edge tab, and then this one isn't as fancy. It's a regular tab, but it's not as fancy as, as that one. So there's three different types. Let me move this out of the way. All right, I'm gonna cut this excess off here real quick. The easiest way to do it is to score it down the middle. You should be, if you're really careful, you should be able to score it just perfectly. So when you fold it and cut it, it should match pretty good. All right, let's cut these two apart. And then I'm just gonna cut them both out at the same time. Whoops. I've already filmed the video to show you how to put the instruction manual together. Um, that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. And I showed you how to cut those tabs out, so um, I feel like I'm double doing it here. Double whammy. But just in case you don't check out the other video, 
So it's pretty easy, even if you get off a little bit, well, you know, you just go back and trim it up. You know, I'm not a, a perfectionist about most things. And then you just ink them up. Okay, I'm going to cut the rest of these out that I want to use, and then I will be right back. Alrighty, I got the tabs out that I think I'm going to do. And I'm just going to use my Fabri-Tac. And I'm going to run glue along the back side here. And I think what would be cute, I was watching something earlier today and I saw like a, a faux clipboard. And I thought this one right here would be cute if it looked like it was a faux clipboard. And then it could be like if you could pull it up from the pocket, you know. I thought that would be cute. Whoops. Maybe I didn't get any glue right there. Hold on. I need more glue. <laughs> you gotta get glue on the edges or it's not gonna stick. Let's try it again. So I thought it'd be kind of cute. Right, so it could have like um, like um, if it was in this pocket, you know, it could be like a. Gosh, that's adorable. I'm just gonna leave it right there. That is too cute. I like I like it. Whoops. Let me make sure it's stuck. Okay. Um, and this one, right, and I'm just going to just close it over top like that. And then this one, I think I'm going to put it in a belly band, I think. So I think I'm just, just going to put it in the middle, even though I'm not putting it in the side pocket. I think I'm going to make another envelope for the side pocket. So, and I used the round one this time. Isn't that cute? It's not quite the middle. I'm not real good at finding the middle. It's way off the middle. But I thought, you know, it might be cute like right there, you know? And then this one goes in this envelope pocket here, like that. And then I was going to put this one in the first pocket, the first side pocket, because because I want it there. And see, so it fits in perfectly. And then I was going to put this last one in the last pocket here. Or, I mean, this other booklet in the last pocket there. And it fits in there just perfect. Let's see. What else do I have? I've got this envelope right here. Um, mum, mum, mum. I don't want to put it in there. I feel like since I got all discomb... Oh, there's a pocket. Should I put it in here? Or is it too big? Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe I should put this in here. Huh? Yep. I like that better. Okay. So where did that one come from? I'll put this one here. I like that. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you how to mat your envelopes with um, your envelopes. Does that, that make sense? Yeah. What you would want to do is print off uh, one envelope on either white cardstock or um, craft or whatever, whatever you're using. And then print one off on your pretty pattern paper. <clears throat> and what's cool about this is you can use both sides of your paper when you go to mat. So I'm going to cut both of these out and I'll be right back. Alrighty, I have both envelopes completely cut out. I haven't scored anything yet or anything. Um, but what I want you to do is I want you to take the one, this is the pattern paper, and I want you to cut it into pieces. 
each piece needs to be cut. And then it, you don't have to use these flaps. It just depends on how, how um, particular you are about your matting. Okay, so the idea here is that you take this piece and you mat it on top of here, right? Well, it's obviously too big, it's the same size. So what you wanna do is you wanna take a little bit off of the top and a little bit off of the side. So I think I'm just gonna take just a little bit. I don't want too big of a, uh, it's probably not a quarter of an inch. Probably a little under a quarter of an inch. Maybe a quarter of an inch. No, nope, probably a little under. And then I'm going to go to the top and take a little of the same amount off of the top. So now it should fit in there just perfect with a border all the way around. Okay, so that was the easy part. So then the, the, li the lid, the lid. The, um, the parts that have the rounded part, the parts that fold up, it's a little bit more tricky because, you know, you have to deal with the rounded part. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same amount, a little less than a quarter of an inch, off of the one side, just like that, so that it, yep, gives me an eighth of an inch on top and bottom. So then I'm going to take um, an eighth of an inch off of each side. That's it, an eighth of an inch, if that, maybe even smaller. I may just take off the, the part that's uh, distressed. That's too much. So just a little bit. I might have taken off too much. Okay. So, yeah, that looks good. So now in order to get the rounded part, let me move this out of the way enough. To get the rounded part back rounded, you want you to take and put it up underneath your envelope. Find a pencil, not a pen, and then just trace it. So that way you'll have the same curve. And then scoot it over to this side and line the both flat edges up and then mark it so you should have that perfect curve and if not then I messed it <laughs> oh no nope, look perfect perfect okay so then I'm gonna do got one more piece to do I'm not gonna worry about those two flappy doos so the same thing, I need to take some off this part right here. I'm going to take a little under a quarter of an inch. And then a little under an eighth of an inch on each side. Just like that. Let me move this out of the way. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to line these two edges up. Mark it. Scoot it over. Line it up. It's almost perfect anyway. I mean, it's just barely off. But this is a good way, if you ever want to mat an envelope that you can print out, this is the perfect way to do it. I could have matted the pretty pattern side, or I could have printed out the pretty pattern side. That's what I should have done. Hmm. Maybe I'll do that and use this for something else. No, just go with it. All right, so I've got this piece, this piece, and this, I can also flip it this way if I wanted to. I might do that. What's on that piece? All right, so I'm going to ink all this up and score my edges, and I will be right back. 
Okay, I've got the envelope all glued and inked, and then I've got my pieces all ready to go, but I thought it would be fun to add a closure to this with some seam binding. So I'm just gonna cut a piece of seam binding off. Hopefully it's big enough, I just should have measured. Yeah, it's perfect. And then I'm just gonna add it to the back side here. I'm just gonna run a strip of glue. It's not gonna matter because it's gonna be covered anyway. And I'm gonna try to maybe eyeball it a little. Probably shouldn't do any more eyeballing. Let me put this back. Oh, excuse me. All right, so my back piece is gonna be this piece. Yep. <clears throat> so I'm gonna glue it down. Right over top of that seam binding. Wait a minute. Better make sure I got this right. There's no right or wrong answer. See how perfectly it mats it? Isn't that cool? <clears throat> okay, I don't want to go underneath the the lid there. I don't want the seam binding to go into the lid. The lid, the flap, the whatever. You know what I mean. And you just want to line that up pretty good. I really like matting these envelopes. It's really cool. And then I'm going to flip this one this way. Oops. If you really want it to, you could mat that, I guess. Just use some of your scraps. Let me put the lid on there. I haven't gotten an insert ready for this yet. So, I'm going to put that there, right, and then this ties. Is that not cute or what? Adorable. I love it. That's adorable. That's absolutely adorable. Okay, and where am I going to put it? Oh, I was going to put it in this, um, so here, was I going to put here? I think so. Let's see if it'll fit with that seam binding. I forgot I was putting it somewhere like that. So cute. I might have to swap that around. I don't know, we'll see. All right, I have an idea for this little small envelope here. I printed it out onto regular craft cardstock with the Harlequin pattern on it. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach it as a flap right there. So I've already added the tape there, but let me go ahead and add some glue and close it up. And I've already inked it. Well, oh, that's going to be a mess. And you know what, too? I think so it doesn't fall out the edge here. I think I'm going to run just a little bitty bit of glue right here. Whatever I stick in there, the insert that I stick in there. Just a little bit. Hopefully my insert will fit now. I hadn't checked first. Well, if not, I can just trim it down a hair. You could mat this envelope just like you did the larger envelope. You can mat it. You could print out another one and mat it. Put my lid on my glue real quick. So I put a piece of sequin score tape on there. And I'm just gonna, well, I'm just gonna stick it on here. I think this would be cute. Just like that. Maybe use a paper clip or something. I might mat it. I don't know yet, but I think for right now, I'm gonna leave it just like that. And let's see if the insert fits in there. If not, I might be matting it with the insert. Make sure there's no glue on there. I would hate for it to get stuck in there. Let me let the glue dry before I stick it in there. Isn't that cute? Let me grab a paper clip just to keep it closed. Somebody asked me where I got these round paper clips. I got them at Hobby Lobby for $1.99. All right. Maybe I'll make a cute um, paper clip for this book. 
just to keep it closed for now. So that's a cute idea. And then I have another one that I think is kind of neat. Transparencies. I printed out the pocket page onto a piece of transparency film. So this transparency is um, made for my printer. So I have an HP laser printer that I printed this out on and that's what this is made for. So you can barely subtly see the, the Harlequin pattern on there. But I thought this would make a really awesome cool clear pocket. So let me grab my, my foam fun foam scoring mat. That's what I'm going to call it. You could use acetate. You don't have, you could use pre-printed um, transparencies, you know, that you can buy at the store if you wanted to and cut it down. The whole point of this is to not have to measure so much. The whole point of the printable. So then you want to gently score just like you would a paper. You don't want to press too hard. You don't want to tear through it. And then you want to flip it over and get glue on me. And it doesn't take the score near as good as a paper does, but that's okay. It will though. Eventually it will. Now, I don't have any special tape for the transparencies. I know they make it, but I don't have any. So, I'm just going to be using my regular old score tape. Oh, look, I've made a, a mark with my nail. My nails are really long. I need to, I need to do them. All right. So, I'm going to go ahead and put my score tape on first. Well, you can't see it as much as you think you would be able to. Unless, of course, you're looking for it. I know that that's what I've noticed. Well, come on. Pick a side. <laughs> I think transparencies are so fun. I like to use them whenever I can. Let me burnish this down. The right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and attach the bottom corners together so it's not so hard to manage. And then I'm going to figure out what page I'm going to put it on. I like it there. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and peel my tape off. So you can't hardly even see the tape. You can see the the fold thingies, but that's it. So let's see what I got. I can stick in there just for now, just so you can see. Oh, I have a. I'm getting ready to show you how to make these. That see, look at that. So cute. This is the wrong paper pack, but yes, adorable. Now I need to figure out what I'm going to put in here. Okay, let me show you how I did this one these two here. It's really cute. A lot of times you'll print off a pocket page and then you'll have a leftover pocket page like if you use the full pocket page and then you have the half pocket page you can cut it down and mat both sides of it with your large cutoff pieces. So what I'm going to do the easiest way I found to do it is I cut this down. What I did is I took the three and a half by twelve inch inch piece <laughs> and I cut it directly in half. So it's the same strip, I just used the two different sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue it down, I'm going to mat it, and then I'm going to trim it out. And then glue down the other side. This way you don't have to do any measuring. You just fold your long strip in half, cut it in half, and then you can glue it down like that. Then get your paper trimmer out. I got my Fiskars <laughs> heavy duty paper trimmer. 
And then I'm just going to trim it out on this side to where it's about an eighth of an inch. Oops, or less. <laughs> That's what I, I did, or less. And then I'm going to trim off all the flaps. What well, you know what? You don't even have to trim off all the flaps. If you wanted to make this a flip, like a, a tag flip, you know, an up-down type deal, you could leave that flap and glue that out. I wonder. Let's see. Let's see if I want to do that. Oh, but I've already glued that on there. Because it, it meant for it to go. So, okay. Eh, maybe I'll do that one. Maybe I'll do that. No, look at me. Pfft. Since I'm moving a paper trimmer out of the way, I just grab my scissors. Maybe I'll do that a different, on a different one. Alright, so I'm going to flip that over and then I'm going to add this piece to the back and it should fit just perfect. Of course, you can make this any size you want it. If you want it smaller, if you want it longer, uh, whichever. But that's a good way to use up those extra pieces if you didn't use all your pocket. All your pocket pages. Where's that clear one? Would that be cute right there? Like that. So I have another idea. And um, it's kind of like the little booklets that we made. And it's kind of cool. So what I did was, this This is not part of the paper line, but it matches pretty good to the Marion Smith one, so I thought it'd be cute. So what I did was I printed it out on this paper and I used the Harlequin pattern and I cut the flaps off. And then I think I'm just going to, here's the insert that actually goes into it. So I put it on the craft card stock. And I think I'm just going to sew that into there like that real quick. Let me grab something to, to sew it in. Okay, I think I'm going to use some seam binding, some black seam binding, um, and a really large needle, or large uh, needle. I wanted to point out, this is the Hug Snug seam binding. And it's a pretty good amount of seam binding for like $10. And I get asked all the time, where do I get it? I get it at Zipper Stop on Etsy. So if you go to their Etsy uh, shop, they also have a link. I'm pretty sure they have a link to exactly where they sell this from. But I like them because they're, they give you discounts if you buy more than one. And they're really quick. They, sh they ship it really fast. So you get it really fast. So check them out. Zipper Stop. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. If it's not, I will have it flashing across the screen right now. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to, again, I'm just going to eyeball it. I've not really been wanting to measure lately. Where's my pokey tool? So I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to go through both. Try to keep them somewhat even. Oh, I guess I should have threaded my needle. And again, I go in from the outside. <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> I'm going to go in... I'll start on the inside. I'm going to go in from the outside. <laughs> Jeez. I think I'm just getting silly. Obviously, I've got way too much seam binding here. You could have it tied on the um, outside if you like. But this way, I feel like I've got the option to glue it sh cl shut if I want to. So you can't see the knot. Or I could just leave it like that and it's like a little extra something something. I'm going to just leave it I think for now. But then I thought it would be cool to also have like a wrap closure. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to find the center. The center of the, of the flippy flap. Yep, I think that's it right there. I'll find the center. Okay, so now I'm going to take these whole reinforcers, force mints. <laughs> I still haven't got that straight. Whole reinforcement. Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add this on here before I um, before I punch the hole because it's easier to line it up if you do it that way. So this is just like an office punch, which is the 
the best one to actually fit the size of that opening there. Oh, those I colored, they're white, and I colored it black so that it was, um, so that it matched. Then I'm going to flip it over and add one to the inside. Just like that. And then I think I'm going to use seam binding. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to guess. I can always use it for other stuff. If I have too much. I think I'm going to fold it in half. I think. This is the way I'm going to think I'm going to do it. <laughs> and then I'm going to string it up through that hole there. And... I'm going to stick it through that hole, just like you would do if you were doing a tag. If you wanted to, you can make it more secure. Okay, so now you can, uh -huh. you can wrap one around and leave one up and then tie it. like that. And then you want to cut your excess off that I'll have to use for something else. Right? That's cute, right? And now it's a little envelope booklet. And where can I put this? That's cute. Maybe I'll leave it there. I know what I can do. I know. Instead of tying it in the middle there, I'll tie it down here. On the edge. There. Now it should be able to fit in just about anything. Yeah. Here's another idea uh, for the leftover pieces from the three and a half by 12, uh, pieces that you've cut off or pieces that you just cut in half if you don't want to use one of the leftover pockets. Uh, first of all, you can just trim them anyway and ink them on both sides and there's inserts. But you could also use the same cardstock that you were using to print off your main stuff with. Sorry about my dog. Uh, and then cut them down to size and then glue them on. Sorry, the mailman has come. <laughs> Okay, I think they're done barking. So then you just want to glue them down and just leave an eighth of an inch all the way around. This is an easy way to mat these little pieces. And then I got room for another one. And I also have pieces that will go along the back side once we trim them out here. Get my paper trimmer out. And then I'm just going to cut them out. Try to leave an eighth of an inch on the side. I usually do less because I'm not real good at eyeballing. Hello. This way you don't have to measure anything. You just put it in there and glue it down and trim it up. Just like that. Okay, so then all you want to do is flip it over and put the other side, the back side, so you have a double-sided matted tag with your leftover pieces when you cut off the large leftover piece. Like this particular collection, this collection pack doesn't have a whole lot of pages. There's a lot of ephemera and stuff. So I couldn't print off a whole bunch of mats and things, which is fun. Um, so now you got to improvise, and this is how I'm improvising. I'm just making tags out of my leftover pieces. And then of course you would want to ink around all the edges there. One more. Let's just have a... So for this 
journal. I've been using the black archival ink from Ranger. But use your favorite black ink. You don't have to use what I use. You can use black distress ink. Alright, so you get the idea. You want to ink around all the edges. And now you've got some quick little inserts that you can put in your pockets and things. You can add the tabs to them to have them pull out of the pockets easier. Okay, well let me know in, in the comments below if you can think of any other cool ways to use this new digital printable, the Stack the Pages printable. Um, if you can think of any cool ideas to use with the envelopes or any of that, um, just leave it in the comment box below. I'd love to give it a try. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, and uh, I guess I'll see you next time. Bye.